Welcome to a new video. This is a Meet the Maker video. I haven't done an introduction video since maybe the very first video I did, or at least within the first couple of months of making YouTube videos. So I thought I would do it. There's a really great challenge that I see pop up year after year called March Meet the Maker. And um, seeing as it's the end of March, I thought I would do my own video version of March Meet the Maker. Get yourself a cup of tea, grab your sketchbook, um, grab a cute pet to smooch with and let's let's roll. So this is the prompt list. March Meet the Maker was actually created by Joanne Hawkes. It's pretty cool. I love seeing it every year, everyone else's stories and stuff. So let's start with number one, story time. I have been an artist or a creator or a maker, whatever you'd like to call it, since since I remember. I know it sounds cliche, but it's true. One of the first things I remember making was a train made out of tissue boxes, crepe paper, colored circles, toilet paper rolls, um, and I gave it eyelashes. And I remember the kindergarten teacher being blown away by it. And then I was like, yes, <laughs> this is for me. I just remember spending endless countless afternoons with my little pieces of paper and all my connector pens making little stories making little characters and just playing with drawing growing up i did all the art i could i did extracurricular art classes which were so lovely all through school if we had to do some sort of a project or assignment i would always try and wrangle it to be a drawing or a painting or a little book to rather than you know doing an oral presentation or whatever i would try my best to do what i could in art form <laughs> and then going into high school i did basically the same thing i took every single creative elective i could um, and made friends with all the other art kids and the art teachers and had a lot of fun there and then after school, I went to uni where I studied some fine art, which went for two years. Um, I learned a bit of sculpture, poetry, black and white film photography, um, dry point etching and printmaking, all sorts of things, which was really fun. And then a few years after that, I ended up going to university to study animation, which was a three year course. And that was where I feel like I really bloomed and figured out that I could make art a career. And thus started my journey on being an artist. The next topic is the human touch. And this is something I really enjoy when I'm making art. I love getting my hands dirty. I love having my hands covered in paint i will even wipe my brush off on my hands or my legs or my clothes sometimes the endless pile of clothes that have now been designated to painting clothes like outweighs my normal everyday clothes just by the amount of paint that gets on there so human touch i like to make things with my hands i like to move my hands i like to feel things I like to experience things with my hands so making art is just part of that and I love it when you can see little bits of animal hair in my paintings or the fingerprints and things or where I've wiped stuff or where there are layers and layers of paintings underneath this painting so you can see all these textures and um, yeah textural effect is really exciting to me and and that's uh yeah the magic of hands the magic of human touch um humans are magical <laughs> the next one is evolution i think that we are forever evolving and i feel like i am forever evolving when it comes to my art practice and my uh, quote unquote style i am always reaching out for new experiences new inspirations new music new films new animals new nature walks new all sorts of things i love evolving i love experimenting and playing and the momentum of continual play 
allows for so much evolution and growth. Can't think of anything worse than coming to like a style and then deciding that's my peak, that's where I'm going to stay at. Um, because that sounds so boring to me. This, you know, for me, that sounds really boring. I just want to keep playing and experimenting. So evolution, heck yeah. <laughs> Tasks. I guess my, my general day is so up in the air depending on what I feel like doing and what I can manage, what I can emotionally manage. Um, a lot of tasks running my little business include admin stuff, which hurts my soul sometimes. <laughs> you know, emails, rep responding to emails, um, getting invoices going, doing my taxes, blah, 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 blah. I am bored just talking about it. Um, so those tasks, they happen <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes I avoid my emails for a good week or two or three and that can get me into some trouble. Um, but my favorite parts of the day is I, I wake up, I have my little coffee, might take the dogs for a walk, have my little breakfast and then I will sit down and do some drawing, some scribbling in my sketchbook. Hanging out in my sketchbook is one of my favorite things to do. From there I will see what happens, where the day takes me. I have a, I also have a list up on my wall for my patreon things that i need to do so it's like a task list um, and i will try and tick off as much as i can as early in the month as i can so that i have the second half of the month to play <laughs> but it doesn't always happen because admin is hard as a, as a hyper smoothed down basic version of my day in tasks it's just all up in the air that's about it <laughs> combination not really sure what this topic means, but uh, let's talk about color. <laughs> okay, I love color. I love color so much. If you've been following me for a while, you know how wild I am about color. And I love coming up with the weirdest ugly color palettes that just work somehow. And they the combination of those colors in this like... I don't know, typically like ugly colors working together is so exciting to me. I love it. I, I love colors. When I worked in animation, I did a bit of color theory and color story stuff for them as well. Um, and you have to have a really clear knowledge on color and how that works when you work in animation. But yeah, moving all that into my illustration and landscape and other stuff work, combining colors, weird and wonderful colors and trying to like find new mixes new combos is a huge passion of mine your brand my brand so i started my business name this will be nice a number of years ago so my family heritage is scottish um, and thistles are like a scottish emblem and i'm also a dad joke lover i love puns <laughs> And I thought it was a good pun. This'll be nice. <laughs> and that's it. And I just have a lot of fun with that. Under the umbrella of this'll be nice, I originally was going to go and do yeah freelance work and client work and, I don't know, murals, art residencies, gallery shows and blah, 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 blah. And my pseudonym was this'll be nice. But I ended up kind of evolving back to just using my name Sophie McPike because I wanted to be a human I didn't necessarily want to be a brand I wanted to I wanted to be relatable to people and I wanted to talk about real things and show my messy workspace and show my dirty hands and you know life isn't always pretty and beautiful and fun and exciting as an artist um, I'm pretty happy chappy most of the time, but yeah, like I just wanted to show people that I'm a real person. So I thought using my real name kind of helped with that versus just a, a business name. Today I'm making, well, I was working on my April Patreon rewards today, which is very exciting. I finished this painting. You'll be able to watch a video coming up in the next week of me making this but yeah it's a gouache painting of a sweet nudie 
peering behind a bunch of large leaves um, and it's a bit cute. <laughs> focus and priorities. Hmm, I think my focus and priority are to be as authentic as I can, to be as me as I can and to have fun and explore and just hope that people <laughs> orbit around that at some point. Um, I'm lucky enough that I do have some very loving patrons and customers and that sort of thing that are keeping me afloat. Um, but yeah, I, th I think I don't really have any big, grand, great goals or focuses or anything like that. I just want to try and live as comfortably and sweetly and smallly <laughs> as I can in my own little world. Signature style. I touched on style briefly just before um, and I definitely have evolved a lot over the years and I want to keep evolving but I hope that my style or my language, my shape language, my line language is kind of you can kind of see it throughout my work, my color language. Um, I feel like sometimes people will see a fairly realistic landscape of mine versus an illustration and they will know that it's my work. People have told me this, which is pretty cool. But yeah, I'm not too worried about having different quote unquote styles. I just do what has what I have fun with doing. Um, and sometimes I'll get into the zone of wanting to only do realistic portraits. And then sometimes I will do only super scribbly or super rhythmic illustrations. And then sometimes all I want to do is landscapes. Um, but yeah, maybe my signature style is more about colors and rhythm and flow in my work. Collection. I've done a few collections over the years which I'm really proud of. Um, I mainly do them for my calendars and I do these in October for the Inktober or, or October art challenges. I did a series that I was really proud of called Nice Places to Have a Nap a couple of years ago which I loved. Um, I made 13 illustrations using inks and um, they were just all wonderful, whimsical, lovely, sweet, nice places to take a nap. Um, and I loved making that series. And the following year I did a series called The Collectors of Important Things, which I paired with a little poem. Um, and again, similar to the napping series, just weird, wonderful, whimsical things to collect. and. I love, I love making collections like that. They make me so happy. Challenge. Ooh, I love a good challenge. Okay, let me think. One thing I like is going into a new artwork, a new illustration without a guide, without a plan. And really, it's a really good challenge in learning how your brain works and figuring out layers and figuring out colors. I love the challenge of making happy accidents, happy mistakes, and then figuring out how to work them into your artwork or how to transform them into something that works in your artwork. The challenge of that, of fixing mistakes, is so exciting. I love it. Process. If you've watched any of my videos, you'll be very clear about um, what my process looks like when it comes to making an illustration. Um, my desk gets super messy. I get paint everywhere, all over my hands, and I love it. I don't know, starting from somewhere, I guess I would like to have a piece of paper or a clay board, and I like to pre-blobinate it. So I'll throw down a bunch of color, like nice bright color, and then on top of that, I'll work over in my um, acrylic gouache or whatever material I'm using and build up layers to make my illustration. Um, always sort of changing and edging and cutting in and just figuring out how things work as I go and um, yeah, I love it. I love that process, just always evolving. It's really fun. 
gifting ideas well <laughs> is this where we like promote ourselves a little bit i have a shop an online shop and i have a bajillion million stickers i love stickers and i know you love stickers and i love making stickers stickers are so good so i have a bunch of stickers um, and I have a bunch of uh, geekly art prints and stuff like that. I've got greeting cards. I've got some keychains, um, original art. Um, and every so often I'll do some ceramics and that sort of thing. So, you know, whatever floats your boat, there are gifts there for everyone. <laughs> Day in the life. Maybe I mentioned this a little bit before, but my days don't really have much of a structure to them. Some days I'm like, I feel like taking my dogs to the beach and we're just going to go there. <laughs> or sometimes I will spend the whole day editing videos. Or sometimes I'll spend the whole day playing Stardew Valley. Um, but mostly I spend the days painting, uh, drawing, drawing in my sketchbook, or dreaming up ideas, um, just playing, <laughs> and responding to emails. <laughs> details. Oh, I love details. I love the lack of details as well. I like, um, for example, I make self-portraits every so often, and I like to play with which areas of the self-portraits require more detail versus what requires less detail. Like, I feel like when you're making a painting or whatever you're doing, a sculpture, not all details need to be of equal value. Um, it depends where the focal point is, it depends where you want your viewer to look. So um, when I'm doing a self-portrait, I like to put most detail around the eyes and maybe yeah like the that middle face area eye, eyes nose mouth area and then less detail as i venture further away from those things just because it makes you look in the areas which i like to paint the most yeah and with landscapes for example if i really like the, that patch of flowers over there I will make sure that they're more detailed and then maybe it's a bit more wishy-washy in the trees going up into the background positive mm, I don't know I have a pretty positive um, vibe when it comes to my artwork I think I have a lot of fun I think my color use is really positive and playful and silly and cute um, and joyful and I love that and I I'm also not afraid of trying things and uh, experimenting and that sort of thing and I like to, if I'm having a hard time, I like to somehow figure out what I like in that process. So yeah, I don't know, I, I just try to have fun and a good time when I'm painting. I always try to remember how good it felt when I was a little kid to paint and to make stuff. I always try to remember that. Product story. Hmm, maybe I'll talk about my prints. My prints have taken a bit of a journey over the years since I started selling them. I used to just go, back in the early days, I used to just go to Officeworks, which in Australia is the office supply store, big brand store, and you could get printing and stuff done there. And the paper and printing quality is just basic really quite basic so that's where my print started and they used to sell for super mega cheap and then I started going and um, sending my artwork to proper printers that cost a lot of money especially when I was in my early 20s <laughs> um, and I would have to do a minimum order so I would end up with 25 of each print as a minimum or 30 of each print as a minimum and sometimes they wouldn't sell or they would take literally five years to sell. I even still have some prints from back in those days in a box somewhere that I don't know maybe I should just throw away but um and yeah so that was a big step up for me paying actual money for actual amazing quality prints. Um, and I did that for a number of years, which was hard. <laughs> it's a lot of money in a chunk. So um, during COVID, actually, during the lockdowns, I decided I was ready to buy my own printer and do it myself. And that way I was, I'm able to print on demand. I'm able to tweak the colors to 
the way I need them to be tweaked like I want to make the colors my way sometimes when you send your file to a printer you kind of get what you get um, and you don't really you're not able to really tweak the colors as much unless you pay for like a one-off print of something which can be quite pricey so I spent all my money on a really nice printer. I have an Epson Shore Color P600 printer that prints up to A3 size and it's amazing. It took freaking forever to set up the prints and get the paper profiles right and all that kind of stuff. But once it was done, it's great. And so now I can make an artwork and do a couple of prints of it, promote it. If no one buys it, I haven't wasted anything. Um, I haven't wasted thousands of dollars <laughs> on a bunch of prints. Um, so yeah, that's the story of my art prints. It's been really nice to be able to look over it with my own eyes and perfect it the way I'm happy with. Call to action. Um, I'm not sure what to say about this one. Maybe I will talk about the Greyhound stuff. Uh, you may have seen in a few videos that I have been a foster carer of greyhounds for 10 years. I've had about 13 different greyhounds over 10 years that I've rehabilitated and stuff. So I'm mega, mega, mega passionate about the greyhounds and um, the, you know, ending the greyhound racing industry and that sort of thing. So I, back in the day, used to do a lot of prints and pin sales and I would donate proceeds to the charities there and every year I will donate some proceeds of my work for certain artworks that are dog related to um, Gumtree Greys or other Greyhound charities. I have this one artwork called Those Eyes um, based on my dog Bibi. Bibi has a Bibi has a problem with her eyes it's called Panis and it basically means that she's going blind very slowly so she has these eye drops every single day um, and she needs them for the rest of her life so all the money that i make on that print specifically goes into the bbi fund so yeah a moment of calm yeah just watch me do some fun painting stuff for a while <laughs> Packaged. Also every Monday or Tuesday I go through and I fulfill all my shop orders of the week. I have a lot of fun packaging up your orders. Um, I like to make it extra fancy and nice with a little business card and a couple of little, little postcards, thank yous and stuff like that. And um, on the back of my prints I have this nice congratulations and care guide. Um, but yeah, I just like putting a little extra touch of love into my little shop orders and I put little stickers on the front of envelopes and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Vision. I think, I think one dream I have for my future is to have a bigger studio. Currently, it's just a small bedroom in my house that I've converted into a studio and um, I'm outgrowing it so fast so I would love to have a studio one day that's the main thing in the vision of my future I just want to be in like a little bit of a forest a little bit rural have some water have some trees nearby and my own studio and my dogs and I will be so happy for the rest of my life <laughs> Welcome to the end of the video. Thanks for making it all this way. If you made it all this way, please let me know, I don't know, your favorite thing to draw in the comments down below. And um, another great big sparkly thank you to my patrons. You are my favorite. You are just my favorite. Thank you. I appreciate your support always. Um, and yeah, see you in the next video. Bye.